Howdy doody! You're watching a short walkthrough of The Witcher 1 Enhanced Edition. Extra or additional. Additional or extra. New adventures. These adventures are short stories that extend the life of the game, but are best played after the main campaign. Some adventures are prequels to the main story, some are sequels, and some take place in indeterminate times. Believe it or not, there are currently 20, 21 fan-made adventures that can be played after finishing the main campaign. For those of you who are hardcore fans of the Witcher saga and want to spend a little more time with this crippled but awesome game. Currently, if you get the 1.5 patch of the game, there are only 7 extra adventure stories integrated, like this. These are the extra 7 adventures integrated of which two actually is developed by CD Projekt Red, the original creators of the game, and the other five adventures are fan-made. The rest of the fan-made stories has to be downloaded manually and added to the game, because there are many more besides these uh, seven. On this playlist's journey, I will start uh, with two of two of the official extra adventures created by the original developers of the game, which are Price of Neutrality and uh, Side Effects. Okay? Yeah, great. Um, yeah. You can follow the rest of the episodes of this walkthrough on this playlist. Because most of them are pretty long and I will cut one adventure to more episodes, most probably. So, this way it will be more pleasant to and easier to follow and watch. So, enjoy the adventures of the renowned Witcher, White Wolf. P.S. For more information on each episode, check the description of the respectively video. Price of Neutrality the famed White Wolf Geralt of Rivia returns for the winter to Caer Moran, the witcher's fortress that lies hidden amidst the Blue Mountains. He finds that uninvited guests has arrived before him, bringing trouble with them. Becoming entangled in the conflict, Geralt must choose between the greater and the lesser evil decide if he is willing to pay the price of preserving his neutrality. Master Dandelion, Master Dandelion, do you promised us a ballad? Yes, yes. Of battles and brave of warriors. Of sorceresses and magic. Of unrequited love. Silence, brats. You've not been in this world for long, so it is no surprise your heads are hollow. This is Dandelion, friend and companion of Geralt of Rivia. Who might he sing of if not of the famed Witcher? Right you are, honorable dwarf. I shall sing a fresh new ballad about White Wolf. Our story begins long before the Great War, decades before Geralt ever dreamed he would be famous. Its title, Bitter Evil Hearts. In the fall of 1232, the Witcher decided to return early to Caer Morn, fearing the quick advent of winter. The Witcher was angry. The final stretch through northern Kedwin was usually calm, but not this time. He was twice ambushed by bandits. Then one night, wolves attacked and killed his horse. He had grown accustomed to the kindly gray mare he had traditionally christened Roach. To make matters worse, at the foot of Caer Morn, he encountered a camp. 
Like all witchers, he believed the fingers of one hand would suffice to count the people who knew the way to the witcher's fortress. Visitors were a sign of trouble. Seems we have uh, some talents. We are level 20. We start at level 20. Yeah. After that, we just have to distribute our talents. This is how we start, I guess. This is gonna take while because I have to figure out what enemies I'm going to face, so I'll just skip this part ahead, okay? Okay, so I finished uh, distributing my talents. I checked my inventory, I have I I have a few stuff. I have two potions of swallow and two of Tony Hall. And the uh, king and queen bomb, and the basic equipment of a witcher, witcher sword, and a steel sword. Yeah, basically that's it. Okay, so let's go ahead and oh, saving for me. Thanks. We should return to Cairngorm. I have no desire to perish in this wilderness forsaken by the gods. Silence, Merwin. They are but wolves. Wolves that fearlessly attack an encampment thick with campfires. I ask your forgiveness, mistress, but these are but wolves, like I am but an elven shoegirl. Did anyone ask for your opinion, Mr. Brings? No? Then start doing what you are being paid for, and keep your hopelessly cowardly opinions to yourself. We would all be safe if your boys manned their stations, instead of constantly playing dice while bathing in drink. Now take away this corpse before its stench fills my tent. Can I ask what happened? Wolves killed the boy. Nothing unusual about it happening in a camp. It's commonly known that wolves, the cursed beasts, love flames so much that they bathe in them if they could. Enough, Brings. Who are you, sir? Geralt of Rivia. Witcher. Prince Merwin Adamain of Ard Karaig. Kind of you to visit, finally. We've been awaiting your response all day. Response regarding... I'll explain. I'm Sabrina Glevesig, sorceress. Come see me at my tent. Moen, I assume you won't mind my handling this matter? No, though I will want to know what you agree. It'll have to wait, whatever it is. Wolves approach. To arms! <laughs> Let me at him, let me at him. Come on, dude. God damn it. These dwarves are hard warriors. Melitelli's tits. Of course. Whose tits? 
Okay, sorry guys for uh, blabbering this much, but from now on I'm gonna try to speak uh, as little as possible, okay? So for you, therefore you can enjoy the story more and uh, get in depth, depth with it. So, enjoy. Welcome to Mistress Sabrina's tent. In case you're wondering, this is an illusion. Everything? Yes, but my dear Witcher, it's an illusion of rare quality. In fact, it barely differs from reality. No matter. Suit yourself. I assume you are returning to Kaer Morin for the winter. You assume correctly. Enough of the small talk. We have important things to discuss. Thank you for your help with the wolves. No problem. You've heard of the curse of the Black Sun, Witcher. The curse of the Mad Mage Eltebald. I believe he started the whole mess that led to several dozen nobly born women being murdered or imprisoned in towers. Eltebald was no madman, and there is no doubt that women were not entirely normal. Madness, normality, it's prattle steeped in relativity. Tell me something specific. Autopsies were performed. The mutations witches undergo are but a minor clinical operation compared to those caused by the curse of the Black Sun. The skulls and spines of these girls contained red sponge of some kind. Their internal organs were in disarray, some missing altogether. Everything covered in moving cilia and pink and blue meat scraps. What say you to that? Nothing. I've seen humans with eagle talons instead of hands, with wolf fangs and eyes, people with additional joints, all products of mages fumbling with magic. It's no proof of a curse. We digress. Why are you here? A girl affected by the curse of the Black Sun is inside Kaer Morin, Princess Deirdre Adamain, elder sister of Moen. What do I have to do with this? Don't play the fool. That girl is a serious threat to you. Surrender her to me and no one will get hurt. I'll think about it. Sabrina, I wish to have a word with you. Naturally, Merwin, but not now. I have several matters to discuss with Geralt of Rivia. Is there anything I should know? Don't fret. We will confer later. In that case, I shall take my leave. Rubbish removed. Perhaps I should beat the rugs. Witcher? Have you spoken to the other witchers? Who is at the castle? Merwin spoke to two of them. There may be more, I don't know. Merwin was not let inside. That shouldn't be surprising. We don't generally like guests. Like it or not, we are special guests. Merwin carries a letter of safe conduct from King Henseld. Read it, and tell the other witches to prepare for a visit. What do you aim to do with Deirdre? See if the curse can be removed. Study it, and finally and ultimately conclude the matter of the curse of the Black Sun. Contrary to what you believe, I intend to make her an offer. If she can find the will to aid me, 
It will only ease things for all of us. And if she doesn't agree to help? I shall force her. Yes, Geralt, for the greater good I will bow at nothing. For I stand to save hundreds, perhaps thousands. You may not believe me, but there are more women of this kind. Many rule entire lands with a cruel hand. I am to report to the Council of Mages. The first trustworthy report, containing specific results. I must examine the girl, and that is precisely what I will do. Nothing and no one will stop me. I understand your determination. It's a difficult matter. Indeed. And you witches are not making things any easier by giving the girls shelter. Think it through, Geralt. I will. Witcher? You must be bored out here. Well, in truth, the valley provides little in the way of diversion for the civilized. And my illusory boy is no longer as entertaining as he used to be. You could get Briggs' men to put on a show. I said diversion for the civilized. I prefer some cultured conversation. Mm -hmm. If you lack words at the moment, I could request something more pertinent to the witchly profession. I require some materials for my research. Materials? I wish to study the wolves that lurk about the campsite. I need a vital organ, let's say the liver. Twenty of them. In exchange, I will give you a sword that I in turn receive from one of my lovers. I believe you'll make good use of it. Fine. I'll get you the samples you want. That's kind. You're much nicer than that boar Lambert. Witcher? See you. Soon. Go and speak with the witches. Sway them to my point of view. I'm a professional. I know what the girl needs. And I'm very good at demonstrating gratitude. That I do not doubt at all. I see you have spoken to Miss Sabrina. However I lead this expedition, remember that. I will. Are you able to read? I am. Then read this scroll. To my barons, vassals, and all free subjects. Go on, go on. Let it be known far, wide, and by all, that I hereby declare Merwin of Cainegorn to be our loyal and trusted servant, and to be loved by us, thus rendering all who cause him grief liable to incur our royal wrath. Henselt, King of Kedwin. Good enough. Understood? Indeed, though grief is spelled differently. I see you are quick. So you accept that if the witchers wish to travel freely and unmolested about Kedwin, they should not cause me grief, no matter how the term is spelt. You don't seem like anyone's causing you grief. Not yet, no. But that may change, and my patience has its limits. I wanted to ask you something. Hmm? May I ask what brings you to Kaer Morin, sir? My sister, Deirdre. She is my elder, and in Kedwin, the eldest offspring inherits all titles and estates, no matter the gender. My father, Prince of Cairngorm, may he rest in peace, passed on two weeks ago, a victim of syphilis. So Deirdre is now Princess of Cairngorm? She would be, if not for the curse that holds her. Anyone aspiring to the throne of Cairngorm must fulfill two additional conditions. Cairngorm is a vassal state of Kedwin. For decades, the princes of the north have bowed before the throne at Ard Kareg, a throne currently occupied by King Henselt, who has made his opinion on the issue of cursed princesses very clear. I think I get it. And the second condition? Do you know Cairngorm's history, Witcher? Not well. We have this custom whereby any aspiring ruler, prior to assuming the throne, must spend a day amongst the duchy's simple folk, 
execute a series of menial tasks, and pray in the Temple of Freya in the evening. Sounds reasonable. The problem is my sister has displeased the simple folk in the past, and though she most probably could bribe a few prominents, the priestesses of Freya will never accept her. Because she is cursed, supposedly. Because she has killed too many, even for a princess. Her victims include the priestess Isildura. Truthfully, the old hag was nearing the end of her days, but that changes little. Is it certain that Deirdre caused her death? Beyond any doubt, when Miss Sabrina decided to perform a magic ritual that was to lift the curse from my sister, Deirdre went mad. Then a huge wolf emerged from behind a house, and before it could be stopped, it shredded Isildura's throat. Miss Sabrina cast a powerful spell, and the old priestess's spirit arose and said, I was killed by Deirdre Adamain, who was born beneath the Black Sun. Sabrina cast a spell, you say? I believe necromancy was banned. What? Hmm? Can I ask a personal question? You may. What's your connection to Sabrina Glevisig? Mutual respect. That's evident enough. Hmm? Can I ask a personal question? You may. What do you think of Deirdre? I'm talking about the curse, of course. My information is limited. When we were children, several charlatans appeared. They counseled my father, examined Deirdre, told fortunes and calculated horoscopes. They brewed mysterious concoctions. Nonsense, all of it. When Deirdre was twelve, a certain mage arrived, an Oneiromancer. Do you know what Oneiromancy is? Divination based on dreams. I thought so too. This individual was an altogether different kind of specialist. The mage claimed that he needed to spend a night in Deirdre's chamber as she slept. He mixed a brew designed to amplify her dreams. The old man could barely walk, had a beard down to his waist. We suspected nothing. He did as he claimed he would do. By morning, he was gone. Several valuable items had disappeared from Deirdre's chamber, including her favorite mother of Pearl Comb. Only the laundresses in the outskirts saw him, claiming that he had fled as if chased by demons. So he deceived you and robbed her. Did the prince order a pursuit? Of course he did, but too late. The morning after that tragic night, Deirdre claimed the mage had raped her. My father refused to believe her. The cheat was an old man, as I said, and the bed linens betrayed nothing. Deirdre fled the castle, assisted by a young stable boy, an excessively broad-shouldered oaf. My father sent out a search party, yet Deirdre had disappeared without a trace. A week later, the party found the old mage's corpse. He had been tortured. Someone had cut off his... I can do without the details. In any case, he was a thief. He could have angered many. You're right, of course. Yet folk inhabiting the area where he was found claim to have seen a young girl and boy ride through on large wolves. Wolf-riding children only appear in fairy tales. You can't tell me that a twelve-year-old girl and idiot stable boy managed to evade a search party, find the cheat, and... I'm suggesting nothing, merely recounting facts. Some time passed and Deirdre returned to the castle. From then on, my father ordered the dogs set upon any majors that approached, assuming that any true sorcerer would surely manage to avoid a few bear-hunting hounds. And then Miss Sabrina appeared. Take care. humans. Always creating problems for yourselves. Couldn't build the damned castle even higher into the hills. <clears throat> hey, what is it you seek? Such is a soldier's lot. Greetings. I'm Merton Brings, commander of this pathetic bunch. Geralt of Rivia. So, how's it gonna be, Geralt? How is what going to be? Will you make peace with the Honorable Glevisig? 
Please take that damn bitch. Or are we due to have a serious misunderstanding? Believe me, Merton. You don't want to cross swords with me. Of course I wouldn't. I've heard what your kind can do. I once saw a witcher at work. That changes little, though. We're on contract, and contracts are secret. So what will it be? I don't know yet. Let's try to figure it out. All right. Uh, forgive me, I can offer nothing. We can't hunt because of these wolves, and our supplies are running low. How did you find Kaer Morin? We tracked the girl here, thanks to Rhyme. He's the best scout I know. Could find a fish in a stream. He did track the girl down. Geralt. Any thoughts on this girl, Deirdre? Uh, too thin for my taste. Nothing to grab hold of, eh? Or slap. Or take and... I guess she's just not the dwarven type. Precisely. Though, I wouldn't kick her out of the sack. Not afraid of the curse? Afraid? No, Witcher. I'm a rationalist. Don't believe the whole gosh. But you're wasting your time. The girl's inside your fortress. See her for yourself. Not a bad idea. Damn dwarves. All they can do is pass wind oh, and sweet. curse to high heaven. Greetings. How's business? Business, Witcher. I'll make sure the boys are supplied. I'm not a traveling vendor. True, I'm willing to trade in some things, but I'll generally only sell unneeded or worn equipment. Surplus, you might say. Geralt. So what's the story with this contract of yours? Well, when Merwin tells us to fight, we'll have no choice. He pays regularly, on time. My hands are tied. So the nobleman is in charge? Theoretically. And practically? I'll say this. Sabrina Glevisig interrupts King Henselt when he speaks by pounding the table with her fist and ordering him to shut up and listen. What does Henselt do? He listens. The woman can be very unpleasant. Merwin is from Cairngorm, and only recently joined Hensel's court. He's no match for the witch. Who is? Witches are best handled by witchers. <laughs> Take care. Plowing cold as Covia. What? What's that stench? My delicacies! Why? No reason. Take care. Master Geralt. What is it? I merely wish a brief word with you, sir, but reveal not to Miss Sabrina that I drew you aside. All right. Talk to me. Master, do not defend the lass you harbor now in your castle. She is not worthy. I detest her with all my might. It will be two years now when she passed through my village with her retinue. My father, keeper of the local tavern, took in the noble party. I know not if he offended her or if it was just her whim, but she tormented my father to death, slowly and cruelly, forcing my mother and me to watch. May she be damned for the ages. And no one raised a hand to stop her? It was but the princess who had a retinue of armed men and who wielded a sword herself. There was nothing anyone could do. I beg you, surrender the girl to Sabrina, who will repay her for all her ill deeds. I need to speak with the other witchers first. Hmm? 
Have a minute. I wanted to talk. So speak. How did you find the way to Kaer Morin? Do you fear for the castle's safety? Unnecessarily. I have no intention of divulging the road to the legendary Kaer Morin. Thank you. I am not new to the mountains, Witcher. The road to Kaer Morin is winding and steep, but I know how to navigate in mountains. For I was raised in these hills. Are you from Dol Blathana? Close, but not quite. I fought at Dol Blathana, but hail from elsewhere. The Blue Mountains, as you call them, are my home. You're a free elf. Yes, I am a free Ansaid, and no commander, no order can change that. What's your take on this pursuit after the girl? I'm paid to find paths and trails, not to pass judgment. So answer like a hunter. Is what they say true? Is she a monster? I shall answer like an Ensaid. Evil can assume many forms, even those pleasing to the eye. I have long followed the girl's trail and seen many signs of murder, seen those cruelly maimed and rendered living dead. But you tell me, the corpses and blood, are they any different from what normal humans create? I defended Dol Blathana against your kind and know what you are capable of. When asked to judge who is human and who is beast, most often I shrug. See you. Okay, so I think I will cut it here because uh, this was long enough until now, and see you in the next episode.